This is the Swarm and Shoot football show with me, Manny Matsakis, as we kick off season two. We've been fortunate because we've had a, a few good interviews. We bring Lynn Grohl on here, and um, he's able to interview some of our players. And we've got a lot coming up in this upcoming season. And um, this Swarm and Shoot football show is brought to you by Big B Coffee, which I've got right here. And uh, it's right across campus here on North Clinton Street. Get the finest coffee beverages in Defiance, as well as great pastries and breakfast sandwiches to start off your day. And for most of us, we also get a pick-me-up in the afternoon by heading across the street to see Sue and everybody over at Big Coffee. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, BSN Sports. Rob Held, Jim Garris, and the crew over here the sales team are the professionals that you definitely need to get in touch with to get your gear. All the DC gear, if you're a high school program out there listening to this, get in touch with these guys and they will help you out. They do a fantastic job with high schools, colleges, businesses in the, in the area. Um, can get whatever type of apparel they need customized just for their business. So I know uh, Rob does a great job for us. Jim is our rep that I see virtually every week of the year, and it just, it's outstanding customer service. Welcome back to the Swarm and Shoot football show. We're joined again by Defiance College head coach, Manny Matsakis. Coach, we're going to talk about a victory today. Yes, we are. It was a lot of fun for our guys, and, and they, they played well uh, throughout the game. 22-16 over Manchester. Uh, your, your takeaways, first of all. Well, it was it was one of those games that for us mentally getting over the hump. I mean, we hadn't beaten Manchester since 2016, you know, and uh, and that was a real close game then. Even when when uh, I'm trying to think, they were five and five here at that point, and um, you know, and, and it was just an opportunity for us to play well, and we did improve. Probably the best the best takeaway I have is for the first time that. Since I've been here in a game, we had uh, zero turnovers. Uh, so no fumbles, no interceptions, no muffed punts, nothing. So uh, when you do that and you create five turnovers on defense, uh, it gives you a pretty good opportunity to uh, control the game. And, uh, you know, so, so that was exciting for us, even though we were down early. Um, I, I could sense our players on the sideline just locked in, focused, and uh, feeling that they, they could pull this one off. Touch on your defense because their first possession, they go 15 plays, 64 yards, almost half of the first quarter, Yeah, and, and you get down early 7-0. What, yeah. what differences were there for your defense yeah. to kind of get on track after that point? I, I think what happened with our defense was they, they were sound the whole time, um, you, you know, you know, you look at Manchester, they, they've got a very good offensive coordinator. Stan Bedwell does a nice job there. And uh, he, he, you know, he's new. He brought the air raid offense in. So we knew they were going to be throwing the ball a lot. And that was their feature for the day. And um, and I thought that uh, once we got in sync and realized that, you know, all right, we're, we're covering guys. Now we just got to, you know, close up the uh, – the opportunities they have, you know, not give them as much space to throw the ball. Uh, our defense made good adjustments, and uh, Thomas Coltrane, our uh, linebacker, had a, a great day and uh, and was just named the uh, HCAC Defensive Player of the Week. And he had like 16 tackles in that game, and he was a man possessed and 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 really uh, led our defense. They had 25 carries, just 29 yards, so a big difference with your rush defense, just 282 thrown, and they threw it. 54 times so so your defense was yeah pretty special yeah they were and and there's no doubt I, I think that they they would get more confidence as as the game went along and uh you know we were able to force some three and outs and some punts and, and we had two turnovers where um where, where we got them in the end zone we, we had some interceptions down there and Javon got those guys playing great down there and we we were uh pattern reading properly and uh you know, we were in position to make those plays. So anytime you do that and, you know, and, and you get an opportunity to uh, limit a big play offense like that to this kind of yardage and production, I, I think uh, it is, is fantastic on our defensive. And the yeah. other side of the ball, the rushing attack. Yeah. Uh, probably by far your, your best 
outing rushing the ball and, and some time here. It is. And it's just the way we did it. You know, you look mm-hmm. at a guy like, uh, you know, we've been talking about Tyshawn Freeman, the, you know, the 5'10", 272-pound super back that uh, is tough to bring down. You know, he uh, – you know, there were times where they had two, 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 three guys trying to tackle him, and he would just move the pile another five yards. And and then when he breaks through, if he gets through the the D line level, he gets up to the linebacker level. You can't arm tackle. You've got to bring everybody to bring him down, and he's still going to drag you. You know, so I thought with him out there, he he he's one of those players that um, the whole team can rally around. Uh, he, he's very um, reserved. He, he's a guy that is a great teammate, and and uh, he he will play banged up and just keep bringing it, you know. So it's like he doesn't want to let his team down, and uh, and and I think um, you know his his effort uh, throughout the game um, really helped us out. And um, you know, he like I said, he, he's he's a very good back, uh, and he's a freshman. So I mean, you know, so we're excited of where he's. The the, the uh, you know he didn't get here till January you know he wasn't even here in the fall so I mean he's he's making some great gains. We touched on finding a feature back. He he's kind of mm-hmm. taken that by the the reins. Yeah, it ha- you know, and I've been other places, guys. You, you we have some really good backs here, but but what starts happening is if if a guy starts to do that. We'll keep him in and let him keep going, and he gets in better shape. And I think he's one of those guys. I mean, where's number thirty-six for a reason? You know, we talk <laughs> about it, we call him the bus. You know, and uh, you know, just like Jerome Bettis, the the more you give him the ball, the more he wears you down, and then uh, you know, then he starts to have that those explosive plays that'll hit. And that's what who he reminds me of. I mean, we made a decision that that's who he was going to be, so we channeled our Jerome Bettis and. And there he is. So the bus is is, is arriving. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> what what is the next step for him? He, he's only been here three months. Obviously, what mm-hmm. is the next step that he has to kind of take in his his improvement here at DC? Well, I, I think for him, it's just uh, he, the next step is is getting more comfortable in there. Uh, he, he you know he, he's getting the reps. If he continues to get reps and stays healthy, then I think he is just what you said, a feature back. Um, but but remember, we, we got some other ones in there. We, it's just when you get going and you got a guy like that, you got to keep feeding him, you know. And uh, and I think we get better as we go. And he he he's very athletic. I mean, for a 270 pound guy, he is extremely athletic. Um, and and just. Like like we say, he, he's just a great teammate that uh, unselfish and, and just keeps getting it done. If we had to throw the ball every time and he blocked every play, he, he's happy. He doesn't have to be the guy carrying the rock all the time, which uh, we're going to give him the rock. I mean, we're not stupid. I mean, we're going to find ways to, 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 to put him in good position because I think our young offensive line – you know, where most of the game we got two, possibly three freshmen playing in there. Uh, those guys, um, you know, they roll up their sleeves, and Chris Shank has those guys blocking extremely well for a young unit. And it's just, um, you know, I think his maturity as a back will come as our offensive line matures, and, and they'll all be back in the fall. So that's that's huge for us. Our top six O-linemen are all be back. So that's that's something that if we can get them – as a unit, you know, we talk about the six of the, the five guys down in the super back, get them as a unit to train and have a great off season. I think that's, that's all of their next phase uh, of improvement. Yeah. Uh, I know it's just one win and I don't want to yeah. make too much of it, but is it clicking a little bit for this group? Uh, I'm sure this gives them a little yeah. mental boost, a uh, <clears throat> victory like that. I think it is. It is clicking. Uh, as you say, it, it's more of a, a deal like they're, they're, they're getting confidence because earlier in the year, we we didn't convert certain situations, and now we are. You know, earlier in the year, we were like, ah, could we do this or not? This is our kids talking. And now it's like, yeah, let, let's let's get to work. Let's bring a lunch pail and go out and play the game, you know. And it just you, ju- you just keep pounding the stone, so to speak, and eventually it breaks. And I think our guys are getting that confidence they need because it does take it, – it seems to take more offensively than it does defensively initially. But once you get going, you know, and you have your identity, and, and, and I think that is what 
our goal has been for the spring is to get our identity. Who are we when we get in these games and play? And, and I keep telling our guys, hey, you are a physical, tough, fast football team. And that's what we got to build on right there. Now, can they, can they get you know, stronger and faster. Absolutely. Yeah. But that only, that's only going to come through playing the game and training and, and probably this off season or this longer off season helped us in playing the game. Uh, it did not help us enough as we've talked about before in the weight room, because you're still limited with the number of guys you can get in there when you have a big squad. I think that's where we're behind. And uh, hopefully we can build on that after this spring season for a couple weeks and send them home um, to be in position to train uh, properly so they can come back and have a great, you know, a great fall. Let me ask you about that. It's because this is usually your time when you're doing that strength, weight training, yeah. and now you're in season. Is there a difference there? Take me through that from, yeah. from a coaching perspective. Total, total difference. you got to remember – 70% of this team are freshmen or newcomers, you know, yeah. so th that is the area that you wish you had a ho whole lot more time with, you know, in, in the, when COVID hit and well, I think it was like end of February, March last year, up to that point, January, February, the gains we were making in the weight room were phenomenal. And then bam, we couldn't do anything. And really, we couldn't do anything all through the fall. So it's like we got what we got, and we had to work on that. So it's like it is different. We have to do more functional training because we would get them hurt in the weight room uh, if we did a full strength cycle because you can't do that and play the game in season. It's just your body can't take it. So, we'll, you know, we've got things like on Mondays we go out and, you know, the defense will be out there. They're pushing slads. They're doing functional training. They're doing, you know, push-ups, uh, planks, all kinds of other things to get their total body in shape to play each week the game. And, uh, and then we just focus right now, we just focus on like the O-line and the backs in the weight room because that's about all we can get in there right now. So we, we focus on those guys so we can make some gains there, but it's still going to take some time. Yeah, and all these other teams you're playing, they have oh. juniors and seniors that have been in the weight room. Yeah, they know two, what three, they're doing. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's difficult. Oh, yeah. on your guys right now sure and, I, and i'm sure it's frustrating you know for for teams when when we play well against them and they know like oh geez you know they're they know our situation that you know they'd lick their chops any anytime we're coming up on their schedule because they think they're so young and all this and i can understand that but in the end i think we've we've been able to recruit uh very well and, and that is making a difference. You know, so some of the guys that are a little more mature, like Tyshawn, come a uh, big high school outside of Atlanta in the Macon area, and he, uh, you know, he, he knows what to do. This isn't, you know, he's not a typical freshman because he's mature and, and, and he wants to play the game hard, and that's how he plays. Get some momentum going, and then you have to go down to Cincinnati and play. Yeah. Probably the best defense we talked off the air. Uh, yeah. The best defense that you're probably going to see this entire spring with with what the Mount Saint Joe brings to the table. Yeah, they're they're very good. I mean, there's and, and probably what what they're great at is uh, they don't make errors. They're seasoned. Uh, their system is sound, so you, you don't get guys out of alignment. You know, which is sort of what happened. Uh, <laughs> I think when we ran that one jet sweep with Machari and he went the distance on that, they weren't ready. They were out of position a little bit on it, and he, you know, he he scored. You know, but but teams like this, you're you're not you you're not going to catch them off guard this way. So you're going to have to literally find any uh, any you know kinks in the armor, so to speak. Is there a mismatch somewhere? Is there somebody we can attack? Because uh, that's what we're searching for when we watch film of Mount St. Joe. And th there isn't a lot of that because they're used to winning and they're used to playing great defense. I mean, they played Franklin last week and they shut down the most high-powered offense in our league, which is Franklin. And um, albeit Franklin is, um, I don't want to say, they're, they're more one dimension. They focus on throwing the ball. And... Um, you know, they, they couldn't balance it out against Mount St. Joe. And I think in the end, you know, they, they, they give up, I think, le less than 300 yards on 69 plays to Franklin, who had been cranking up 500-yard games prior to that. Where do you have to be really good offensively Saturday against that defense in your mind? 
uh, upfront, balanced. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know, I, I think we our feature play is now uh, has become the outside zone play. So it's it's a play that uh, it, you know Tyshawn is running very well, and we're blocking well. And uh, I, I think we know that's who we are. I mean, we get under center and. You know, heck, Manchester the other day, they're screaming outside zone. I, I, yeah, okay, it's coming. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not going to not do it, you know. So it's like that's who that's our identity. So it's a very physical downhill play uh, with a big back that once he gets three steps and he gets moving, it, it's tough to deal with him. So, I mean, we, we I'm sure Mount St. Joe has seen the film. They're going to come out and say, hey, we got to stop the back. And I would, too. I would, too. I mean, because that's, that's who we are. And um, it gives us a chance uh, every week when, when you can – I think when you can run the ball, uh, even though we're a four-wide spread offense, um, when, when, when you can run the ball like the NFL does, um, not that we're anywhere near that, but it's a it, – it's similar attack in the run game uh, that, that you have a chance to uh, convert first downs, keep the ball. You know, I mean, we had 33 minutes of time of possession against Manchester, which, you know, I don't want to go back in time, but 2019, they, the margin of victory was over was 50 points, you know, in the two games they beat us, you know, and it's like we never got close to time of possession. So that was to have that was strong. So I think we, we feel we can do that. It's just, um, you know, that, that's something against a fantastic defense that, that is a tall order. Probably defense that you're going to have to be able to, to throw the ball a little bit on to, to keep them a little off balance. I, I think so. You, I, I I don't think you're not going to be able to just run it down their throat all day. No goodness, I don't think anybody can. Right. I mean, I, I, nobody has shown the ability to do that on Mount St. Joe. Even when, you know, their only loss was to Rose Holman, and they almost beat. I and mean, they had a shot to beat them there. And what I noticed in that particular game was, you know, Rose was balanced and that's what helped them, you know, and, and plus Rose had five senior O linemen, which as a unit is the best unit in our league. Uh, their offensive line is fantastic. So I think that that's why they were able to you know, to win there. And they had a senior quarterback, a feature receiver. So, so they're, you know, Rose, Rose is very good. And, uh, but Mount St. Joe, I don't know, they play them again. It's, it's always going to be a tight game between those two teams. Then you switch over to Mount's offense and just as, as impressive, they have a, a freshman quarterback, Josh Taylor, who mm-hmm. went nuts last week, 21 carries, 225 yards, uh, yeah. through for another, um, 167 yards and 17 is 26 passing. So yeah, there's a yeah high percentage. Issue. Yeah. yeah, he's a high percentage passer. They they um, schematically in the pass game, they're not what like a Rose Holman is, or or a little bit I've seen Franklin. They're, they're not that because what they do is they they have some designated quarterback run game, Tim Tebow esque, you know, and um, that causes problems. Um, I I don't. From looking at them, I don't know that they're a big RPO team. It seems like they're calling it from the sidelines, and if they see a mismatch, they just show the ball and, and you know and sling it downfield. and And they and they've got good receivers that are very capable because you don't go seventeen to twenty six without having some really good receivers in there, especially with a freshman quarterback. So they're making good plays, and I think that that uh, they are formidable. Um, I mean, I I believe you know from talking to my defensive staff that this is the best offense uh, because they're balanced and uh, and that's what causes problems and teams that can run the ball with the quarterback always it's, it's like you have to have an extra guy on the box to deal with that guy and then when you do that then your pass game you're limited in what's in the coverage so it's like it's a cat and mouse game we're gonna have to play on Saturday if they score 56 on Franklin you're thinking that they probably aren't gonna have a whole lot of time of possession because they score quickly in that <laughs> aspect and then you look at the time of possession in that game they had 37 minutes oh yeah so time of possession they get it a huge all. factor this yeah. week for you guys too well I think it is I, I think uh, probably the thing for us is it's like can we generate uh, better yards per play? You know, because that's always been – I think that's when you you have a shot to win. 
Yeah. When you get more yards per play and you're eliminating your turnovers. So, yeah, time of possession comes from yards per play. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you they look at it. They had three drives of, of 12 plays or more. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So so that gives you – I mean, they're good. They're good. And it's going to be a tall order for us. But but I think our guys are excited because we've had some a little bit of success so far. And they just want to go out and improve. And, and if improve means we pull – you know, the D3.com upset of the week, great. If it means that, hey, we, we close the gap on a really good team in our league, that's that's good too. You know, it might not be great, but it's really good. So it's like, how, how can we continue to make some progress? And that that is our game plan going in. And uh, it is, it's totally, and honestly, it's that way every week. It's just get better. Just get better at everything we do, blocking, tackling, you know, running the ball, throwing the ball, just, just improve. And, um, and I, I believe in the three weeks of this season, that's what we've done. We've improved. And it didn't matter the opponent. You know, obviously the result of a, one, a win or a loss did have something to do with that, but it had more to do with us improving. Because if we don't improve from the Hanover game to Manchester, we don't beat Manchester. I mean, point blank, there's no way you beat a team like Manchester who's big and physical and, and, unless you improve. So I think uh, all sides of the ball and probably – and the one group I talked about afterwards uh, when I was able to talk to the team is our punt team. Yeah. Every punt got off. We blocked everybody properly. I think our special teams was the hidden edge in this game because uh, we were able to, to punt the ball effectively and – yeah, I'll give credit to Tristan Yeomans. I mean, he 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 worked extra on the hands team. He had a feeling that so we. I knew I was on the field on Friday. It's like holy smokes, how many freaking hands team are we going to do? And then I'm like, hmm, there must be a reason, you know. And then it then it showed up, and the guys lined up properly, and we got the ball back when we needed it at the end. Yep, 4 yeah. p.m. kick down at Cincinnati yeah. this yeah. uh this Saturday. Good luck, coach. Yeah, keep appreciate them, it. Keep improving, and yeah, it'll be on their box cast. So I've had a few people out there that. Actually, are watching it on their television with that Boxcast app on Roku or on Apple TV. They just download it, and then they just they can. If you hit Defiance College, our home games are there. But if you hit like Mount St. Joe, you'll see their home games, and you can watch it on the big screen, so to speak. And uh, and uh, you know, it's a good broadcast. I know our people, you know. Uh, do probably as good a broadcast as anybody with multiple camera angles and all that and uh, play-by-play and color commentary, which not everybody has that. And uh, I do have to give a shout-out to our donors because, uh, you know, we, you know, we're fortunate because I have donors out there that uh, help us out in the fundraising side, and that's why we can do that. Not every sport – at Defiance College has the play-by-play and and the multiple camera angles. But, you know, we raise money to do that, and I think it helps us because we have – helps in recruiting because so many players are from all over the country and not always have their opportunity for their parents to come to the games where they can can see a quality broadcast. And um, and that's fantastic. So we're looking forward to that 4 o'clock kickoff. And – just just get one day better, you know, this week, and we'll see what happens. Thanks, Coach. We'll right. talk to you again next Thursday. Okay. Bye-bye. I want to thank you for joining us on the Swarm and Shoot Football Show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes. Give us a rating, comment on the show. If you'd like to get all kinds of updates, go to our website at swarmandshoot.com where you will be up to date on all of our podcasts with audio and YouTube versions on there as well. See feature articles on our current players and alumni, along with updates of what's going on in the program. Take a minute and subscribe with your email to receive these regular alerts every time we update the website.